Hello and welcome back to Science Lectures with Zunane Games, and I am Zunane Games. Now I'm going to go ahead and let you know um, a couple of quick announcements before I get started with my video on lunar conspiracists and how to disprove them. Um, first note, I hope that you can understand me. I just got some dental work done, so this might sound a little funky. Um, if you need me to re-say something, clarify, I should be able to do it. I'm sitting in the seat. Should be easy enough to remember. Um, alternatively, moving on. Um, I might. There's a small possibility, not guaranteed, but a small possibility that I might be able to do a small Let's Play series. It might be my only one. I'll do it, and if you guys like it, I'll keep doing it. If you guys don't like it, let me know. I won't do it ever again. Um, like I said, it's probably going to be the only game I can do, because my biggest issue, as you guys know, is I can't record anything on my computer. I run KSP perfectly fine, but the second I um, turn on OBS, it's, um, it takes me 10 minutes just to get to 5 kilometers with a small Mercury rocket, with a small Mercury-style rocket, and yet I can have a massive um, massive 400 part um, 600 part rocket go up perfectly fine I can reach 5 kilometers in less than 60 seconds so just lag is causing me issues um, so if I'll go ahead and do that you guys let me know next I made my decision and I am going to do this from now on you guys are permanently I've decided you are getting Monday Wednesday and Friday recordings always so you guys will no longer miss out if you know Christmas were to come back again I keep releasing on non-stop you know nothing um alternatively so we have no excuse not to be releasing on time and that uh, um I always have video guys um video for you guys I'm gonna do a quick mass break videos just so you know that the next few will be just kind of back to back audio wise audio wise sorry um, the video may be a bit of a delay if so basically for now on if there isn't a video release you can't blame it on me because they're all going to be recorded very very quickly and all very simultaneously so go ahead and let you guys know of that but with that all said let's go ahead and delve into the topic of lunar conspiracists now I'm going to go ahead and let you guys know there are three types, and there are you know, three major type, you know, three major root, um, theories behind lunar conspiracy. Um, the lunar conspiracies. I'm going to start off with the types of lunar conspiracies that you may encounter. Now these are just, um, I just want to say that these are kind of like very, <laughs> very stereotypical. You know, this is just the average. You know. Just very, very based off of facts. These are probably the three most common you'll encounter. There are obviously there may you get may get extremes in these sections, and you might actually get very, very minute versions where it's it is in this sector section, but they don't seem to show as much of that as I described. So go ahead and let you know of that. The most common, most common, in the American populace would be the rejector. And that's that's just a person who has very very little proof that the lunar um, lunar missions didn't happen. They have no proof, and they have no real reason. The reason to believe it is simply because all their friends and everyone all says it didn't happen, and they're just agreeing to it. And that sadly is true because of the bandwagon effect, which is a persuasive technique. Which is persuasive technique, which basically everyone's on the bandwagon, everyone's doing this one thing, or has this one thing, and you're that one person left out. So you want to be, you know, you know, you don't want to be the odd man out. You want to be part of the group, so you jump on the bandwagon, hence the name. And that's how most people end up. They just see that's what everyone believes, so they believe it too. 
It's just how the human mind works, and you could technically pass the same fact off with just about everything. It's not that difficult. It's basics. Um, basic um, sociology. You just have to figure out how. To, um, just figure out how to get that past people. You can make people believe anything, which is sadly what's happened with the lunar conspiracies. Um, see, so yeah, you got the rejector, then you have the denialists, which is simple. You can already identify what they're like. Denialists. They're just people who deny it. Doing it for the sake of argument. You cannot argue with them. They have no logic. They're just doing it to argue. There is no way to explain it to them. Do not bother. You're going to be dragged into an argument that you will lose only because, <laughs> as I like to say it, They've got stupidity. You may have logic, but you're fighting a battle against stupidity. And the problem is, the person you're arguing with, the denialist, has way more experience. So they're going to drag you down to their level and beat you with their experience. So do not bother arguing. It's a dumb battle. When you figure that out, figure out that they're a denialist, give up, in the conver change the topic, or end the conversation. Because you're not winning. There is no winning. Only arguing and getting your butt kicked. Alternatively, you may get the person who's actually done his research. You know, you may end up with that person who's going to start pulling out those very, very obscure, very, very unknown things that you didn't even know existed. But you have to know about them. So that way you can argue against. Now, I'll go ahead and let you know, I'm not the best person in the world for this. You know, arguing against someone. But I have some information, because I personally have read through the entire, oh, most of the Apollo 12 transcripts, audio transcripts, which basically everything they said, you know, every part of the crew and ground crew has said, mentioned, flip, everything, you know, should I confirm, flip the switch, AGS, whatever, ACS, whatever system, whatever system they read off, it goes into the audio transcripts, and that's what I am reading. So... You can use um, even minute information like that for um, proving your point and arguing against them. Because the people who have information are the ones who are going to be the most difficult. Well, because they're going to mention these, you know, it could be any of these three. Now, they're not, all, not all of them are going to be geniuses on the topic. So you might end up with those who just know a little, and they'll probably just be like, yeah, well, what about Apollo 18? You know, why is, you know, why are the lunar pictures, you know, why don't they look more real? You know, there are issues with them. Um, or, you know, they could throw out anything at you. I had a third reason I probably have forgotten. Um, so, yeah, you, they can give you reasons. And as for... As for the lunar pictures, which is an easy answer, Topo you know, anything, if you know anything about basic topography, with enough landscaping, you can do anything. It, because you can't really say that you can see everything perfectly in a picture when I can turn around and say, well, explain to me how you can see everything perfectly in an optical illusion. Optical illusions look like they're one thing, but they're obviously not. For example, the optical illusion of the stairs going up, up, and up in a square, and yet somehow when you go around in the square, instead of the last staircase in that square, you know, the last edge, the last corner, instead of it being the top, it's actually the bottom. And yet the stairs are going up. You can see they're going up. But how is it? that that last staircase is on the bottom. You look at it, and you look at it. I don't know the artist. I want to say Van Gogh, but I know I'm wrong. I know I'm wrong. So, I mean, it's an optical illusion. Stuff like that can happen. Same with shadows. The issue is, you don't know the angle that the equipment is in. The equipment or the crater, you don't know. So, you cannot be certain about how any of this is going to happen, work, whatever. Simply because you weren't there. And you're limited to one angle, to one view. So you can't really identify. 
Now, as for Apollo 18, that's an easy fix. Easy, easy answer. And, you know, like I said, most of them who know a little but not enough, you know, not a lot, this is probably going to be their crutch, you know, because they're just going to use this as an excuse. You know, well, what about this? Well, it's pretty easy to figure out. Three things. One, actually, I'm going to say four things because there are actually four easy issues I can spot out without even thinking. One, the rocket used for, well, planned for Apollo 18? Well, we all know what happened to it, right? No, it wasn't Apollo 18. It was Skylab. Everyone knew what it was used for. It wasn't a secret. Everyone knew it was going to be used for Apollo, um, everyone knew it was going to be used for Skylab. There's no question, it was used for Skylab. Because people were there to watch it go up, and people saw the fairing, and it would have been very stupid to put an Apollo capsule inside of a fairing. Possible? Maybe. <laughs> Risky? Very. So, because if there was an explosion, for example, the less would not be able to jettison them, jettison through, um, jettison them through, through the fairing. And if it did, it would cause some damage, and it would not end happily. They would probably be killed in the explosion anyway. So, you really wouldn't put astronauts on top of, inside of a fairing, unless it was absolutely necessary. So, Apollo 18 just didn't happen. Simple as that. Didn't. Because the rocket was used for Skylab. Everyone saw it. Everybody knew. Next. In the movie, it mentioned that the Saturn V used, you know, when it was going up, that it was a secret launch. Now I know that there are multiple launch pads, launch multiple launch pads throughout the U.S., but I believe that the only one suitable for a Saturn V was in Cape Canaveral, Florida, at the Kennedy Space Center. Again, I might need a fact checker there, but I'm pretty certain about that. I shouldn't need that one. I'm pretty sure that that was the only one specifically suitable because you never needed multiple launches, so you never needed to have more than one launch pad. You just cleaned up the launch pad and you relaunched. So, knowing that information, I can use basic deduction and understand this. I personally have lived in Florida for quite some time as I'm a college student. I've been here since the um, space shuttles, since before that. So I've seen them go up and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, I know for a fact that you could see the sucker go up from the keys as long as the well, well um, sorry, the well, I can't speak, the weather was right. As long as that was right, you could see it go up from the keys, from Cape Canaveral. That's a long distance, and Florida is quite a big state. Not the biggest, you know, because I'm, I know about Alaska and Texas. They're pretty big states, but still, Florida's pretty big. From the northern border to the, um, to the tip of the Keys is about 13-hour drive. That's a long way. That is a long way. So, knowing that, and also knowing this, by the way, that if the wind's in the right direction, you can hear the space shuttle from the Keys. So, when you get an even bigger, more powerful rocket, like the Saturn V, exactly explain to me what part of that is secret? What is that? What part of that is secret? None of it. And the people who live at Cape Canaveral? You explain to me what part of secret is an earthquake, when you can feel it and it's like the sun has just erupted through the surface of the planet. I mean, it's brighter than the sun when it goes up. There's not exactly hiding that. So, easy explanation there. Last but not least, and as my last two reasons, which really can be paired up as one. One, it mentions the 1201-1202 error, which, if you know anything about Apollo, was only experienced on one um, lunar descent, Apollo 11's. On the other five flights, Apollo 12, Apollo, um, Apollo 12, Apollo 14, Apollo 15, Apollo 16, Apollo 17, they never encountered that same issue because that was computer overload. 
too many jobs and they had to drop some. Knowing that, they fixed the issue and managed, <laughs> managed to take care of those minor programs and minor things that weren't needed. So they never encountered it ever again. Why is it that on their sixth flight that they just suddenly forgot everything they learned? I don't think so. I think they just added that part of the, um, that part of the audio from Apollo 11 to the film just to make it a little bit more interesting. Which, by the by, Apollo 18 is the only NASA-related um, film I've ever watched and fallen on asleep to because it's that stupid and boring. Just go ahead and throwing out just throwing that one out there um, because NASA is one of my favorite things ever. Why I'm doing a science lecture? Because they're because NASA's awesome, easy. Um, so yeah, that's that. And last but not least, in the film, you see them sliding around in craters. And if you know anything about craters, if they're on the right angle, in the right place, at the right time, <coughs> then they may never get sunlight in the in you know in the deep part of the craters. They may not get sunlight. If there's no sunlight, that ruins one of the only two types of um, erosion that the moon gets. Physical erosion from the movement and the contact with other rocks, which can be caused by meteorites. If there are earthquakes, quote unquote, you know, that you know that's the only other type of erosion that is not included. You know, the only type of erosion which would be solar radiation. You know, solar winds. And if you're in a crater and you don't get that, then your only type of erosion is physical. And if you're not moving, then that means there's nothing eroding you. And that means a fragment of that asteroid, the fragment of that rock, is never going to wear down. And if you're sliding down on your side in a lunar EVA suit, and you get sliced open, it's going to take less than a tenth of a second for you. Let's go ahead and go down the three issues that are going to be deadly here. You have the radiation, you have the pressure, and then you have the temperature. Now... The lunar suits would keep you alive, but they were not built for the darkness. You would sleep in the lunar module for that sort of thing. So, you would not be able to last very long, even in an EVA suit, in the darkness of the moon, because you were never meant to work. You were not supposed to be outside of the lunar module during the night. You weren't. So, knowing that, you wouldn't last long. Even if your suit was in perfect condition, which it wouldn't be, considering you're sliding down basically a knife edge, which is stupid. You learned that day one as being a Apollo astronaut. I don't care. I understand. Yes, you are bombarded with a lot of learn. You understand that day one. You understand that before day one. You don't go sliding down a dark crater. So yeah. So like I said, the three things that are going to kill you: radiation. Even for a tenth of a second, you're going to get hard boiled by the heat of the um, by the solar winds. The radiation from the sun is going to just cook you. End of the story. You're dead. Less than a tenth of a second. And then you get the pressure. Well, the only thing that's you know keeping pressure, you know, matter into one thing, you know, keeping it from, you know, pushing away from each other is pressure. No pressure. You boil away, regardless of the temperature. You just boil away, because there's no pressure. Pretty obvious. And last but not least, you can either freeze instantaneously, freeze and then boil away, kind of funny. Um, freeze, you either freeze in that crater, or if you're out on the surface, and just for a tenth of a second, you can get just get cooked, fried, evaporated, because you're in the heat of the sun, again. That's excluding the solar radiation. That's just including the heat. So in less than a tenth of a second, you're facing pressure issues, radiation issues, and last but not least, you're also including temperature issues. So you would not be sliding down a dark crater. End of discussion. You wouldn't. So, that's just some basic things to understand about lunar conspiracists and how to prove some of their basic reasons wrong. Um, so I hope you enjoy the video. I apologize if any of this was unclear. You know, occasionally you may have heard me screw up and taken multiple tries to say something. That was probably because of my dental work. I apologize. I tried my best. I'm going to be doing a mass recording spree. I should master how to speak by then. I shouldn't be speaking like an idiot. 
my S's might be a little bit annoying. I tried to fix them as much as I can. Um, please don't best of all, um, base all of my videos off of these, um, this recording or any of my next recordings. I hope that this issue will go away quickly, and I will fix it, and this will no longer be an issue. But if you can ignore that and you still like the video, please leave a like or favorite, whatever. I really don't mind. Just I thank you enough for watching. But um, if you have any comments, I said something that was obviously wrong, and you have proof. Please let me know in the comment section below. I would rather be told to be wrong. I'd rather be said wrong than leave a false fact in my video for people to start believing. So please, if I said something wrong, let me know in the section below. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video.